Chris, welcome back. Thank you, James. Things are really starting to pop for mm -hmm. Chiron across Latin America, and mm -hmm. I am pleased to note that uh, I had a conversation with Vicente Fox a couple of weeks ago, and Mexico is really coming on strong. Yeah, it sure is. And the one of the things I want to focus on here, because it seems to me the audience doesn't really get how Chiron is actually kind of doing this to all of Latin America. Mm. <laughs> and so starting with Mexico, what, what is the client load going to look like in Mexico for what types of products? Well, first of all, I think with, with Mexico, when we're talking about Mexico, we're talking about probably the biggest news that's hit the cannabis industry to date. You know, there's a country of 130 million people, it has a massive middle class, uh, and it's not gonna have the same level of competition that we saw here in Canada with only 35 million people. So this is a massive, massive uh, uh, change in the cannabis landscape, and uh, I think it's one that uh, everybody should be paying very, very close attention to. Mm -hmm. So in Can Mexico is legalized cannabis for both recreational and medical purposes? at this point? So in Mexico, over the last couple months, we've had three seminal events. One, we've had a, a Supreme Court ruling that ruled that it was uh, unconstitutional to deny people access to cannabis. We had the outgoing government uh, provide guidelines for cannabis legalization, which was primarily medical. Uh, and then the incoming uh, government that's now, now in with AMLO uh, tabled legislation for full recreational cultivation, import, export. So uh, they're moving very, very fast. And I, th I think that uh, also characterizes the entire region. Things are, are changing very, very quickly and uh, every jurisdiction that legalizes is having a pretty much a positive experience with it. Uh, this, you just can't keep denying adults something that's safe and that's something that they want and certainly on the medical side it provides a lot of wellness for people. Yeah, right. So that's, uh, you're distributing through a partnership with a pharmacy chain in Mexico. We've announced our first few products and that we're going with Farmalisto, which is we're also using in, in Colombia. Uh, I would expect you to see more SKUs from us, more partnerships, more distribution. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 130 million people in Mexico. Now you've also got things moving forward in Brazil. Yeah, so Brazil, we haven't announced anything yet, but we've had feet on the ground there. Uh, Brazil's an, another massive market of 240 million people. They recently just had an election there, so things are changing very, very quickly. It's our personal view that uh, the um, uh, the region is, is favorable for cannabis legalization, uh, and on the medical side, there's already some 900 doctors trained uh, on medical cannabis in Brazil, but that's out of 450,000 doctors. Wow. Hmm. So then if we were to tally up your Chiron's exposure into the markets it's in, uh, Colombia and uh, Mexico now, as well as the one that it's making moves into, what's the total sort of exposure for the brand? Well, we have, we have exposure to well through 200 million people right now, so we've, we've made announcements that we've had products accepted or uh, approved in Peru. Uh, we announced our partnership with Foundation Dea in Chile, so expect more announcements in Chile as well. Chile is a, a smaller country of 17 million people, but it is mm. the four times the GDP per capita than Colombia, so it's an important market for and us. And Peru? And Peru is, is a market of some 32 million people, uh, okay. and we've announced our first few products there, so we'll get some more, more SKUs announced there, and that's primarily on the Quito line to start. Hmm. Interesting. So is, uh, is it shaping up that the topical, nutraceutical, cosmeceutical product line is going to be the sort of the, the first wave of sales for Chiron across those large jurisdictions? I think uh, any company that's being successful in the cannabis business today uh, has a very tight view on the regulatory environment and the markets where they operate and I think that's our case. So in our case with our regulatory view we're trying to sell what we can, where we can, when we can and we're entering those markets as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, so uh, with, with the Quita line in particular which is our wellness line it's being very well received in Colombia uh, it's very natural for us to progress that into other markets. Mm -hmm. And so how about your production capacity? Is that scaling alongside your distribution potential? Yeah, we've got we've got ample production capacity right now for our for our current our current market, and you know many of our competitors, James, as you know, are focused on low cost cultivation for export into foreign markets. We're happy to have low cost cultivation, but we're very much focused on selling branded products, sales, execution, brands in our regional markets of 620 million people. Uh, and I, I hear some amazing numbers on how cheap everyone can grow in Colombia and other markets. Maybe we'll buy some from you, you know, because our demand is going up for our branded products where we enjoy those really high margins. Right. right. Uh, so that's interesting. So Colombia's got like one of the lowest 
perceived cost of production globally. Yeah, absolutely. It's an equatorial region. It's it's a market w that is that is well suited for agricultural export, palm oil, cocoa, coffee, of course, from Colombia. Uh, so all the regulatory environment that is there, the infrastructure is there to do that. Uh, and and I think some people might be successful at that business, but our business is servicing the people in the markets where we operate. And uh, to do that, we've had to expand very very quickly. I think where our numbers are, we're just under 80 people now in the business, plus our islands acquisition, which we announced that we closed that and got TSX approval for that. Uh, last Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sounds like the, the plan is to be vertically integrated across a few horizontal portals, cosmeceutical, medical, consumer packaged goods ultimately in the, in the food and beverage space as well? I, don't, I think if there's a market that we can be in that we think we have a legitimate shot at being successful and we'll be there. And uh, we've built an amazing regulatory team, scientific development team, agriculture side of course, and now sales and marketing. And uh, really we're making a very strong push into all those markets simultaneously. I know it sounds like a lot, mm -hmm. uh, but we're able to replicate a lot of the work that we've done in Colombia. We've been there for two years now, over two years. We've built an amazing base. We've got a, just an absolutely elite team of people uh, based in Bogota and uh, we're exploiting the rest of Latin America with that team. Sure. So what does this mean for the financial picture for Chiron in 2019? Well, we've never looked better than we look right now. Uh, we accelerated our warrants this last quarter. Uh, we have $25 million in cash, which is more the, than the company's ever had. And you have to remember we're operating in very low-cost operating environments. It's not the same uh, as what people are trying to do up here in Canada. So uh, we're really pennies on the dollar on the operating costs that allowed us to expand very, very quickly. And we're a Colombian company. We're a Colombian-based company. We don't have a whole bunch of executives up here. Uh, my entire office fits in uh, my briefcase uh, right behind you. And we we move around very quickly here. So everyone is being hired in Colombia, in Santiago, in Mexico City, and other, and other places in Latin America. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And tell me, what are the big milestones that you expect to hit in 2019? Well, uh, 2019 is going to be a big year for us. Uh, we just closed our Islands acquisition, that, that clinic business that gets us a lot closer to 100,000 patients right there in Bogota. Uh, I think you might expect us to replicate uh, that model elsewhere. Uh, we are going to have our first prescriptions going out the door in 2019. We've been guiding people towards that. So, so look for that. That means that we'll be cultivating, harvesting, processing, and delivering prescriptions on that. Uh, we're moving our Quita line through multiple jurisdictions, and we're going to get into a couple more uh, jurisdictions uh, as we go. So a year from now, um, maybe we'll have three or four hundred people. And uh, you know, the big differentiator with us also compared to a lot of other companies in our region is that we're actually an operating company. We actually have sales now. Uh, you know, we have to uh, start accounting for that. Uh, and uh, we're hopefully going to do very, very well by our shareholders this year. All right, Chris, we'll leave it there for now. Thanks for joining me again. Thank you, James.